assistance dogs are amazing, but they require a lot of training. Support Dogs, Inc. provides the dogs and the training to those with mobility-related issues. And here with us is Bill Dahlkamp, the Executive Director of Support Dogs, Incorporated. Mm. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. So you've got the job of the year or yes. the decade. <laughs> you got to work with dogs, yes. but dogs that help others, which Correct. is really neat. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about Support Dogs. Well, Support Dogs, um, we are an organization that we raise and train a variety of assistance dogs to help people with differing disabilities. Um, we started back in 1981 in Columbus, Ohio um, by a woman that had muscular dystrophy. And she thought that if she could train her dog to help her with physical related tasks, uh, that that would be a great thing. And if you remember um, back in 1981, really the only kind of assistance dog was really guide dogs. People really weren't in tune to um, dogs that could help in different capacities. Mm -hmm. And so um, she hired a trainer mm -hmm. and they achieved what they wanted to and she was so excited about it she toured the country mm -hmm. and somebody here in St. Louis saw her and decided to open up a chapter of what was then Support Dogs for the Handicap. Um, later we changed our name to Support Dogs Incorporated, mm -hmm. but uh, that's how we started here in St. Louis and since then the Ohio chapter has been absorbed by another agency. But and how many chapters are there across the country? Do you know? Uh, different assistance dog organizations. Support dogs. Uh, support dogs were the only one. Oh, okay. Uh, we're the only one called Support Dogs. Okay. Now, there are varying agencies mm -hmm. um, across the country, Who probably provides? about 120 okay. um, from companies to what I call mom and pop mom and pop mm -hmm. type places that can do this out of their home or on a very yeah. small scale. Yeah. But well, I think that's really interesting because mm -hmm. I had no idea. I mean, to me, 1981 doesn't seem that long ago. Right. And it seems almost as though we should have had that idea or somebody would have had that idea uh, much longer ago in the uh -huh. history of dogs who have been helping uh, us humans for a long time. Yeah. yeah so, it's, uh, and we've got Ben right here, yes. and Ben is retired, Correct. you said. So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about Ben's story. Um, ben was placed with the child, um, and he actually moved to North Carolina. Um, and unfortunately, the child's health um, didn't work out as well as um, the parents and the child would like to, so they had to uh, give up Ben, and so mm -hmm. we took him back. And so now he's living here now, kind of going through some rehabilitation on a diet, losing some weight. <laughs> ben and, is uh, a, a large dog. <laughs> he is, he is, um, but he's a good dog. And so, you know, because of his age, what we will do when he's ready, we'll just adopt him out and place okay. him just as a pet. Yeah, but it's interesting that he was placed with a child. I don't mm -hmm. think of children having assistance of a dog, but what a wonderful idea. Yeah, we do it, what we call with children, I mean, we do a, what we call a family placement, mm -hmm. you know, because a child can't be responsible for right. running or managing a dog. But, right. Um, so what happens is when the child gets the dog, the parents or caregivers will come with the child and then we train them as a group. We call it a family placement. Mm -hmm. And then we certify them and then uh, the children benefit from the dog, but the parents and the child run the dog. Okay. So over the course of a year, right here in St. Louis, mm -hmm. how many dogs are you placing? Uh, we do on average about 20 a year. Okay. Um, we, we are placing um, in training. Uh, we could have anywhere between 55 and 65 in training at different stages. Okay, and how long does it take to train a dog? Uh, about two years, so really? it's, it's lengthy. Okay, mm -hmm. and do you have a, a waiting list of people who want dogs? Yes, yes we do. Um, we have a waiting list right now. It's about 24 months, um, give or take, from the start of the application process to the time when they actually receive a dog. Wow. So if somebody thinks they might want a dog, they should get on your list. Yes, <laughs> and, 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 I, and yeah, we, we say, you know, get on there and uh, fill out the application. Um, we don't necessarily have a numbered list, so, you know, if somebody applies, then they don't wait two years um, necessarily. Um, each dog is different. Each mm -hmm. case is different. Okay. So what we tell people is fill out the application, get us what we need so that we can look at the situation, look at the dogs that we have in the pool, and then if we have one that's going to be ideal for somebody, they might wait. We've had people wait six months. Mm. We've had people wait two years. Right. But on the safe side, we say given that we place 20 dogs a year, we've got about 40 to 45 people on the waiting list. We say it's going to be about two years. So when a dog is trained, are they trained to help a specific need or are they given general skills? Both, okay. actually. Uh, we get the dogs in when they're about eight weeks old and then they go into either volunteer puppy raising homes or we have two prison programs that we mm -hmm. have uh, inmates raising dogs for us. 
And so for the first year and a half, they're trained in these two avenues. All the dogs are trained to the same level. Mm -hmm. At that point, when they reach that year and a half, they are turned back over to support dogs. They come and live at our facility, and then our trainers start training them and putting on the practical skills. And really at that point, we look at the dogs, and the dogs kind of tell us what they're going to mm -hmm. be good at. Okay. Um, you know, we have dogs that help people that have physical disabilities. We have dogs that help people that are deaf or hard of hearing. Uh, we have dogs that help military veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. And then we have what we call courtroom dogs, which are dogs that work with facilitators and facilities that work with children that have been mentally, physically, and sexually abused. Okay. Um, so the dogs kind of pick their... It's amazing. Their, it's really uh, amazing. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break. Sure. When we come back, we're going to learn um, more about support dogs and this great new facility that you're building. So stay tuned to SDL TV. We'll be right back with support dogs and Ben, our friend Ben, in just a moment.